John Reed, Aerodinosaur. This part two summarizes Sky Raider operations in Southeast Asia over the 15 year period from 1960 into 1975 with the fall of South Vietnam. We cover primarily covert U.S. Air Force operations out of Nakhon Phanom, Royal Thai Air Force Base, Thailand, also known as NKP or Naked Fanny. They performed ground attack and rescue missions, mostly over Laos and both North and South Vietnam. While the Air Force NKP operations represents the apex of Sky Raider operations in Southeast Asia, we'll briefly summarize the South Vietnamese Air Force, who marked their aircraft VNAF, and the U.S. Navy Sky Raider operations in Southeast Asia. South Vietnamese Air Force AD-5 Sky Raiders were the first to operate there in 1960 and flew them in Southeast Asia during the entire time the U.S. military operated Sky Raiders there. Early on, the U.S. Navy trained VNAF pilots stateside and initially rode along as observers on South Vietnamese Air Force missions over South Vietnam. Starting in 1963, the Navy began handing Fat Face A1Es and Gs over to the United States Air Force, and these were initially flown in VNAF markings with Air Force, U.S. Air Force pilots and VNAF observers. In short order, the Vietnamese markings were replaced with USAF markings, and the VNAF observers were phased out. With the A1E and G combat attrition, they were replaced by the VNAF and USAF with single seat A1Hs and A1Js. As things evolved, South Vietnamese Sky Raider squadrons focused on overt enemy targets in South Vietnam, operating out of bases such as Tan Zanut, Ben Hoa, Da Nang, and Nha Trang. Squadrons included the 1st Fighter Squadron, call sign Phoenix, the 516th call sign Tiger, the 518th call sign Dragon, the 520th call sign Panther, the 524th call sign Thunder, the 530th call sign Jupiter, and the 83rd Special Air Group, or SAG, a call sign Than Phong. U.S. Navy Sky Raiders flew off aircraft carriers located on Yankee Station in the South China Sea to hit targets mainly in North Vietnam. Carriers such as the USS Hancock, Coral Sea, Ranger, and Ticonderoga rotated in and out of Yankee Station, and their Sky Raider combat operations started with the Gulf of Tonkin incident in the summer of 1964. They flew ground attack missions on all kinds of targets in North and South Vietnam. The reams of combat statistics are beyond the scope of this presentation, but they can be easily found online and in books. The Navy's last EA-1E, formerly AD-5W, airborne early warning Sky Raiders were retired toward the end of 1966 when the Grumman E-1 Tracer and the later turboprop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye fully took over those fleet protection duties. All Navy Sky Raider operations in Southeast Asia ended in the first quarter of 1968 when they completed their transition to A-6 intruder jets. Their Sky Raiders were then passed on to the South Vietnamese Air Force. Initially, United States Air Force operations were based at Benoit, Pleiku, Nha Trang, and U Dorn, but as time went on, these squadrons began concentrating at NKP Royal Thai Air Force Base in Thailand for covert, that is, top secret, interdiction missions over the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos, as well as missions against the communist Pathet Lao to the far north. This also included some ground support missions over both North and South Vietnam and some over Cambodia. This was in conjunction with fast mover jets from the other land bases as well as aircraft carriers including Douglas A-4 Skyhawks, McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom IIs, North American F-100 Super Sabres, and Republic F-105 Thunder Chiefs. This high intensity combat environment required dedicated forward air control or FAC and search and rescue, or SAR, units to be formed at NKP using Rockwell OV-10 FAC aircraft and earlier O-1s and O-2s. These FAC aircraft also established downed airman coordinates. Sky Raiders under the call sign Sandy performed the lead roles to reconnoiter and suppress enemy positions while orbiting with guns and heavy ordnance, clearing rescue helicopters in for pickup, and to provide a smoke screen. 
To conceal the downed crew extractions by the Sikorsky HH-3 Jolly Green Giant rescue helicopters, it's clear that NKP became the main base for mission-specific heavy resip aircraft like the Sky Raider, including the highly modified B-26K Counter Invader, later redesignated A-26A under the Nimrod call sign, the Fairchild C-123 provider that performed FAC and night illumination services under the Candle call sign, which also performed transport duties in and out of NKP. Also stationed there were the AC-119 Shadow gunships with side-mounted guns for orbit concentration on enemy positions. Lighter aircraft, such as the Cessna 02 Oscar Deuce FAC aircraft, necessarily joined in the fun, as later did the larger twin turboprop Rockwell OV-10 Bronco, which did much of the FAC work mostly under the nail call sign. The four-engine turboprop C-130 Hercules command and control platforms, codenamed Alley Cat, called the shots in the covert combat operations, along with Laotian ground operatives. NKP was actually the only propeller-centric base of the war in Southeast Asia. While this included some turboprops, such as the Hercules and Bronco, most were big piston-powered, like this particular A-26 named Mighty Mouse. All the other air bases in Thailand and South Vietnam were jet-centric. NKP in its unique target environment represents the best example as to why an old, outdated, single-engine piston propeller aircraft type would be retained for so long by the military while it was standardizing on jet equipment. The Sky Raider had a heavier ordnance load capability than most so-called comparable jets. It had much better endurance and could therefore loiter in the air much longer than a jet before being assigned a target. With its slower speed, it could also work closer in to its targets, allowing for much better precision and accuracy in prosecuting them. There was no jet that could do any of this until the arrival of the Fairchild Republic A-10 in the late 1970s. Tell me, where's all that sleek jet airframe that would seem to go with the A-10 ground pounder? Not possible. The downside to the old Piston Sky Raider, and a seriously bad one at that, was that it was a much easier target for enemy ground forces than a jet, and it had a higher loss rate to prove it. NKP was also home to the 609th SOS Special Operations Nimrod A-26A squadron from December 1967 until November 1969 when replaced by Martin B-57 jet squadrons. These were highly modified on-mark A-26A counter invaders whose Douglas designed and built stock versions called the Invader dated back to World War II. The on-mark counter invader conversion could carry heavy ordnance up to 12,000 pounds and it had eight 50 caliber machine guns in the nose. The A-26A's role was complementary to that of the Sky Raider at NKP, except the former carried 50% more pounds of ordnance and the Nimrods operated them almost exclusively at night. Sky Raider squadrons flew both day and night missions. Twelve of the approximately 30 A-26As operating out of NKP were lost in combat or non-combat accidents. By far, A-26 
Sky Raiders were the prevalent type of heavy piston aircraft based at NKP. Between 1967 and 1972, there were several U.S. Air Force Sky Raider squadrons operating out of there, and by late 1968, all were designated as Special Operations Squadrons, or SOS. At this point in time, stateside training for the Sky Raider Special Operations Squadrons was mostly conducted by the 4407th Combat Crew Training Squadron at Hurlburt Field, Florida, which is part of Eglin Air Force Base. In Southeast Asia, Sky Raiders were often nicknamed SPAD or Super SPAD after the famed World War I fighter, but this was also the call sign for some SOS operations. The first SOS operations went by the call sign HOBO and with the tail code TC. The HOBOs were the first to fly from NKP in 1967 and the last to leave in 1972. The 22nd SOS used the call sign Zorro with the tail code TS. The 602nd SOS went with the call sign Firefly and Sandy using tail code TT. Sandy search and rescue operations were soon, by necessity, expanded to the 1st and 22nd SOS squadrons. Also, later missions of the 602nd were flown under the SPAD and Dragonfly call signs. The two place A-1Es and Gs, often called the Fat Face Sky Raiders, were used for new guy familiarization in combat zones. When a new guy was signed off, he could fly solo missions in any of the Sky Raider models being operated, but most of these were the single seat versions. Because of their limited visibility, most A-1 pilots did not prefer the A-1E or G. This one is loaded with a BLU-76-B fuel air explosive bomb, which is a 2,600 pound weapon capable of incinerating a very large swath with the explosive power of 10,000 pounds of TNT. For this program, I interviewed Sky Raider pilot Frank Monroe, who flew 224 missions out of NKP in 1969 and 1970. He currently resides outside St. Louis, Missouri. He said that Sky Raider squadrons flew both day and night missions, or about 10 missions per day, involving perhaps 20 aircraft. These were typically two ship formations on each mission for each ground support or interdiction mission. Steel Tiger missions just to the east of NKP were the shortest missions lasting one and a half to four hours. Barrel roll mission targets to the north were much farther away and therefore lasted much longer, ranging from three to five hours. Combat and accident attrition rates were just as bad as the Nimrod counter invaders. Unfortunately, mortality rates were very high. All missions were approved by the Airborne Battlefield Command and Control C-130 aircraft under the call sign Alley Cat or for night operations under the call sign Moonbeam with the assistance of concealed Laotian ground spotters. The Firefly missions were mostly in daylight with a few night missions each week. Most of these were reconnaissance and fact missions for a fast mover, that means jet, ground pounders. As we mentioned, the A-1 Sky Raiders served as the lead aircraft in down air crew jungle rescue missions under the call sign Sandy, providing air to ground reconnaissance and suppression for the Sikorsky HH-3E Jolly Green Giant rescue helicopters who lowered cable penetrators into the jungle to effect rescue. It was often the twin turboprop OV-10 FAC aircraft that established initial coordinates for the pickup area, after which the Sandy Sky Raiders took control by flying orbits around the rescue area and clearing the Jolly Green Giant in for the pickup after enemy guns were reasonably suppressed. The key word here is reasonably, as rarely was total suppression achieved. Because downed aircrew were a magnet for massive enemy ground forces, these were among the most harrowing missions for all involved, and U.S. casualties were extremely high on these particular missions for all aircraft types involved, including the downed aircrew. Success without casualties was mass euphoria, but the all-too-common failure was a depressing morale killer that had to be suppressed within hours in order to perform the next mission. According to Frank Monroe, Sandy operations were a different deal altogether. These squadrons had two planes and pilots designated Sandy 1 and Sandy 2 on a three-day rotation. If any air crew in any plane or any mission went down triggering a search and rescue operation, the whole thing went to war. 
It was all hands on deck and things got tense real quick. Most of the Sandy Sky Raider pilots were the most experienced squadron members. United States Air Force Sky Raider combat attrition was rapid and by 1972 the residual few U.S. Air Force A-1s were transferred to the Vietnamese Air Force. They continued to operate them until the spring of 1975 with the inevitable fall of South Vietnam. The following video segments are of restored Sky Raiders that were painted in late U.S. Air Force NKP liveries. However, our first clips of the Sky Raider called Naked Fanny, taken at Terre Haute, Indiana in 2003, are of an AD-4 restored to look like an NKP era AD-6 or A1H. While this doesn't detract from its impressiveness, most restored Sky Raiders flying today are these Korean era French AD-4s that were purchased in considerable numbers by Warbird collectors in earlier decades. Less than half a handful of A1Hs or A1Js are actually restored and flying today, but our second set of Sky Raider clips taken at Oshkosh in 2019 features the rare restoration of an actual AD-6 or A1H that saw actual service in Vietnam with the 6th Special Operations Squadron. takeoff roll momentarily as soon as John Rutzman in the O2 clears the area and then we'll be ready for Bob Carlton and Silent Wings up there. We're all looking for... 
They palm bombs on both wings as he shoots in towards the enemy, advancing towards our down air. Flying Fortress. And preparing for takeoff now is the fad flown by Dr. Mike Sloss from New York to New York. The A1B Skyraider is the saw in the Skyraider.